At Maluva, we are pushing advanced research in machine reading comprehension. So far, we've achieved state-of-the-art results on Microsoft's MC test, but we decided to test our machine comprehension system on more challenging stories. We started with something that everyone knows, Harry Potter. Here's the opening to the Philosopher's Stone. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious, because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Dursley was the director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large mustache. Mrs. Dursley was thin and blonde, and had nearly twice the usual amount of neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time craning over garden fences, spying on the neighbors. The Dursleys had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion, there was no finer boy anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret, and their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found out about the Potters. And I'll stop there. Linguistically, this is much more complex than the MC tests that our model was trained on, and the diction and vocabulary are very different. Nevertheless, we can do pretty well answering questions. We start with a straightforward one, who were perfectly normal? Maluba correctly determines from the very first sentence in the text that, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Dursley were perfectly normal. Certainly not the Potters. Let's ask something more complex. What secret did the Dursleys have? Oops. We'll give it some sensible candidate, candidate answers. Of course, the Potters is correct. Small son, drills, and cats that could read. Here, Maluba answers correctly again, but we can see from the text that it had to combine information across sentences. So these two sentences right here, regarding their secret and the potters. Let's look at another excerpt from later on in the story. Harry heard the hat shout the last word to the whole hall. He took off the hat and walked shakily toward the Gryffindor table. He was so relieved to have been chosen and not put in Slytherin. He hardly noticed that he was getting the loudest cheer yet. Percy the Prefect got up and shook his hand vigorously, while the Weasley twins yelled, We got Potter! We got Potter! Harry sat down opposite the ghost in the rough he'd seen earlier. The ghost patted his arm, giving Harry the sudden horrible feeling he just plunged it into a bucket of ice-cold water. He could see the high table properly now. At the end nearest him sat Hagrid, who caught his eye and gave him the thumbs up. And I'll stop there. So here's a question that everyone on Earth pretty much knows the answer to. What house did the hat sort Harry into? Of course, the correct answer is Gryffindor. But we have to determine this implicitly from these two sentences here. And in particular, we have to take advantage of the negation before Slytherin so that we don't get, we don't accidentally incorrectly guess Slytherin. Let's ask another question. How did Harry recognize Dumbledore. So here, once again, we have to synthesize the answer from two consecutive sentences, uh, these two right here. In a large gold chair sat Albus Dumb Dumbledore. Harry recognized him at once from the card he'd gotten out of the chocolate frog on the train. So let's give it some candidate answers by his hat by his feet from the card he got on the train. We'll omit the frog for now. And I don't know, quickly. OK, so in this case, once again, we got the answer correct. He, Harry recognized Dumbledore from the card he got on the train. Let's do one more. What did Ron do while everyone clapped? So here, that takes place in this sentence. Harry clapped loudly with the rest, meaning everyone, as Ron collapsed into the chair next to him. So sensible candidate answers, crossed his fingers, 
because that appears uh, just in the previous sentence. Turned pale green also appears in the previous sentence. Collapsed, correct answer, and opened his arms wide because that's a wrong thing to do. All right, we got it correct again. So that concludes Maluba's reading of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone.